Good morning. I want to show you a problem that's very common with older Yamaha pianos. You'll notice it when you play the keys and they don't feel exactly even or they don't behave properly. Now, if you're just playing rock and roll, you, you might not notice, but, but when you play piano very carefully, you want to be expressive with quiet music. You might notice hammers bobble. Or they don't feel even as you play the keys. And I'm going to show you how to detect the problem with this piano. I'm going to start off first by showing you a key that works correctly. When I gently press the key down, the hammer travels forward and just before it strikes the string, it's released. So as the key travels down, there's a direct relationship, a direct connection between the movement of the key and the hammer. And just before the hammer strikes the strings, normally about a sixteenth inch of away or maybe two millimeters, the jack in the action is released and the hammer is disconnected from the movement of the key. I can feel that in my finger as I press the key. When I reach the bottom of the key travel, I feel a little bit of a click. That's called aftertouch. And that is the moment when the hammer is released from the movement of the key, when the jack is kicked out of place. Now I'm going to show you a key where it's not working correctly. When I touch this key, the hammer rushes forward and makes contact with the string and does not return. I'll play one that works correctly. The hammer is released and falls back and caught by the back check. When I press a bad key, the hammer rushes forward, lays against the strings, and does not return into position. And I don't feel that aftertouch in the key. You see, when I play lightly, actually the, the hammer's rushing against the strings and playing a note. Now, in real playing, the hammer's accelerated by your finger. But you do need that full control of the hammer movement with the key travel. I'm going to demonstrate a key working correctly. As I slowly bring down the key, you'll see it advance toward the string and let off. The hammer moves forward and lets off about a sixteenth inch from the strings back to its back check. In a key that does not work correctly, the hammer falls forward and does not receive its proper let off. The hammer is actually free to bobble against the string. Instead of returning back to its back check. And this can be felt in the key when playing piano or very quietly. This key has proper control. So when you hear that double strike in the piano, it may be a problem with regulation, but I'm gonna show you in most older Yamahas what actually is causing the problem. So when the keys don't feel right, when the touch weight just does not feel even, and you notice that the hammers, that one's acting correctly, and this one is not, it goes up and blocks the string and, and, and bobbles when you play piano. This one acts correctly and is caught by the back check like it's supposed to. The hammer's up out of the way to look down and see the springs that return the hammers to place. Upright pianos require springs to return the hammers properly. And here we see that the little string that retains the spring is broken. You can expect that in nearly every Yamaha, like this one, built in 1981, will have broken hammer butt flange springs, is what they're called, which results in this uneven feel and the bobbling of hammers or double striking of, of notes when you play them lightly. Um, so we'll take the action out. You'll be able to more easily see the broken springs and what's necessary to correct the problem.
it's easy to see the broken flange springs where there are not dampers in the treble section. And here we see some that have been replaced. You can see the white string wrapped around the spring and that white string is one that has been replaced and then you can see some broken ones here where the spring is flipped up and the ones that aren't broken are sure to break they're just uh, they're just very old and needing to be replaced so at some time a few of these were changed but they should all have been changed okay we're going to get ready to replace a few of these as a demonstration of uh, how to resolve the problem. I've got here the uh, new Yamaha butt flanges with the without broken strings and uh, we're going to need a pair of uh, flush nippers and uh, a good regulating screwdriver. Pay attention to the spacing of the hammers. In some cases they may not look evenly spaced but depending on how they're striking the strings they may when they arrive the string they may actually be straight so have a look at the grooves on the hammers it might be an opportunity to make a fine adjustment of those but uh, we're going to start off the first one had already been replaced and the second one is an old brown string so we're going to remove the bridle strap first i'm going to reach in with our regulating screwdriver past the jack to the hammer flange screw and remove that hammer flange screw. So once the bridle strap is removed, the screw is removed, that hammer will just lift right out of place. Now the ones with the dampers are a little more tedious, but We'll just start with these and show you how to replace these. You might note that when you're getting ready to change the flanges, the friction that the hammer has, you can just do a little swing test of the hammer and you should see it swing back and forth two or three times. Here's the new flange. Be careful too, you can put these on backwards. Um, make sure that when you uh, take the other one off, you pay attention to uh, the orientation of the replacement flange. We're going to use a tool here and push the old pin out, remove the old flange with the brown broken string. I'm going to push the pin on through on the new one. This is where you have to be careful to put the new flange on correctly. And you might do a little swing check. This one's a little tighter, but it's not too tight. Feels pretty good. And then we'll just trim the knot there. Okay. And we're ready to put it back in the piano. Now, if you're a technician doing this for the first time, you'll probably find it easier to start at the treble because the dampers are not in your way and the hammers are much easier to get in place in the treble section. So just um, hold the, get the flange down there where it belongs. Be careful not to cut new threads as you screw the flange screw back in. You might have to turn a little counterclockwise to find the thread in its slot and then go ahead and lightly snug the hammer check the alignment, and then go ahead and give it a, a, a good little snug plus so it stays in place. And then with your regulating screwdriver, you can fish the bridle strap out where it's easy to reach. Now, you're gonna need to hold the, the, hold the jack down so you can 
lift the whipping back up in place and uh, put your bridle strap back in position here. Okay, there we go. One's done. There would normally be 88 to go. A few of these have already been replaced, so we don't have quite 88, but uh, however long it took you to do that one times 88 will be how long it takes to do the job. So it's not an inexpensive proposition to replace the hammer flanges. So buyer beware when you're looking at a, a 1980s or older Yamaha upright that this uh, plagues all of them. When you find a flange that's just a little too tight, that's not, uh, doesn't pass the swing test without the spring on, or uh, it, should, it should swing two or three times, and if it doesn't, and not snappy enough like you would want it to be, it's time now to fix it. So I have a little um, rat tail tool here. It's uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it, uh, it, it has very microscopic threads on it and threads into the bushings to spread them out a little bit. I'm sure it has a proper name. I'm going to call it the rat tail bushing spreader. So I'll just take that flange back off for a moment. And I'm going to use the rat tail bushing spreader and thread that in. I have a little experience doing this so I kind of know how far through I want to go. You don't want to thread that in so far that you split the flange apart, but you do want to just spread those, um, ease those bushings a little bit, like so. in one side and then the other. In the alternative, you could put a smaller pin in. I'm gonna prefer just to keep everything factory original here. It's better. These treble hammers don't have a whole lot of mass, but um, we need that, bush, that bushing to be snappy. I should say we need that flange to be snappy, not the bushing. And I'm just turning backwards to find the threads there, these steel screws are going into uh, an aluminum rail, and I don't want to cut new threads if I can help it. I'll just get it snug, check the alignment, and on to the next one. I like to use a magnet to grab that screw, and then I'm not having to waste time fishing the screw out of there when it drops. As you go along too, just check your hammers are, are all perky, wanting to jump back in position. It's not a small job. You don't want to charge your customers for your learning curve. You want to charge your customers for what it really does take to do the job with an appropriate amount of skill. Don't charge your customers to learn how to do a job. However, however long that took times 88 is how much this job should cost in labor. And then of course you have the parts. I want to mention also, make certain that you go back and check your work in that, of course, that you didn't put a flange on backwards. You should have realized that by now, but um, make sure that uh, when you did um, manipulate the jack that you didn't knock the jack spring out of place. Now the action is returned to its new condition.
Now we're able to be expressive at a very soft volume, which is lovely in a piano. That's what you're wanting in a, in a fine instrument.